What's going on, smart people? I've been told by high-ranking government officials, the Illuminati, and Dr. Phil that I can't make this video, but the secret's out. They know that I know, which means that I might not be around much longer to make this video anyways, so I better do it now. But um, I, I discovered something. I uncovered a truth by considering something simple. Because nature is simple in the most complicated way possible, which is also why in this video there's no prerequisites to understand it, except for a mastery of multivariable calculus as well as at least a degree in physics and the philosophy of religion. But I started out by considering something simple, and what's more simple than a point charge? Nothing. And I wanted to know the electric field coming from that point charge. And Gauss's law tells us that the divergence of an electric field is equal to the charge density divided by the permittivity of free space. Innocent enough. That's what I thought too. Divergence theorem will tell us that we can write this as the closed surface integral of the electric field dotted into some infinitesimal area equal to the total charge divided by the permittivity of free space. But what is the total charge of just a point charge? It's just the point's charge. Q, that's not a Q. Q over epsilon zero. We might as well take it one step further and assume that the electric field is uniform and pull it outside of the integral. Now we have to construct a Gaussian surface, right? Well, if there's spherical symmetry, because we're dealing with just a point charge, and here's our little infinitesimal area where the electric field is normal to it, well, that means that the radius isn't changing because it's on the surface, which tells us that our electric field times the integral of r squared sine theta d theta d phi, because the only thing that will be changing are the angles, is equal to q over epsilon zero. In other words, theta goes from zero to pi, as you do. Phi goes from zero to two pi, as you do. Which tells us four pi r squared times the magnitude of the electric field is equal to q over epsilon zero, which then tells us that we can write this magnitude equal to q over four pi r squared epsilon naught. But physics uses units, so it makes sense to use a unit point charge. So we will use q equal to one. Nature is also very chaotic and random, so if you want to uncover some of the dirty secrets that nature has to offer, you've got to be equally random. So we have to pick an R value that is the most random thing we can think of. What's the most random R value? Probably 14,631, right? That's what I thought too. Meters. And if we just go ahead and plug this in, we get that E is equal to Q, which is 1, over 4 pi. We're going to say, so this is 14,631 squared. And then we're going to say that epsilon 0 is about 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. And just guess what we get when we play nature's own game, we get that E is equal to 42.00479 in other terms. But that is approximately 42. I know. Electric field leads to electricity. And electricity leads to technology, which tells us that technology 
is approximately the answer to life, the universe, and everything. If I get killed for uncovering this new truth, this newfound knowledge, yeah, I'll be dead. But my legacy, my legacy will live on. And as always, thanks for what, that's not the thing that I say. <laughs>